whether you like it or not, Kirby Smart does not care whether or not you like Mike Bobo. Frankly, he doesn't care if you like Glenn Schumann either. Because Kirby Smart knows the secret to winning in college football. That's what we're going to talk about tonight on this week's How About That <laughs> Dogs Cast. I, I don't want to rush through this because it's the sort of thing that you could gloss over and leave everybody unclear on what it is you're trying to say. That is not what I hope to do tonight. So I'm going to try to slow it down just a little bit and make sure that I touch on all the things that we need to discuss. But the thing is, there really aren't that many points to be made in this argument. Because the rule is pretty simple. You've heard me say it here before. You are going to hear me say it here again. But the reason that Kirby Smart and Georgia football are dominating over the last few years is because of the players, because of the roster, because of the way Kirby Smart recruits. It is always players over plays. Now, I mean no disrespect to Mike Bobo. I think he's done a fine job. I certainly don't mean any disrespect to Glenn Schumann or to Dan Lanning before him. All of these guys are wonderful coaches, wonderful defensive minds, wonderful offensive minds with years of experience. I don't mean to knock on them. I don't mean to knock on Kirby Smart for having a simplistic approach to the game. But the fact of the matter is, if my Jimmies are better than your Joes, I'm going to win nine out of ten times. Now, we saw, just like we saw in the SEC championship game, that you can play less than your best be vulnerable and get beat. Now, depending on the dog fan you talk to, they're going to put that game on a scale somewhere. Was it Georgia's worst game of the season? Was it like the worst they had played out of 10 games this year? Was it their 10th best game of the season? You know, I don't know. Rate it however you want to. But the bottom line is the fact that they were banged up and very well not sharp for most of the game, well, that earned them an L. And it cost them a greater goal. But you can't let that one loss wipe away everything that happened prior to it. And certainly, when they showed up to play in the bowl game, in the college football playoff bowl tiering system, the Orange Bowl, they handled business. They showed up with a purpose. They showed you what that roster looked like. And then on top of that, not only did they show us what the roster looked like when the ones were in there, they showed us what it looked like when it was second, third stringers, they were still having their way with Florida State, much like what had happened against TCU a year prior. When they put in the guys that were not running with the first team, it did not matter. The TCU quarterback, Duggan, he was even caught on camera saying, I just got sacked by the backup, by the second string completely outclassed in terms of roster talent. That doesn't just happen. So that's what we're going to look at tonight, and that's going to, that's going to be the thing that we're going to talk about the most because if Kirby Smart believes in anything, he believes that it is not the way you draw it up on the chalkboard. It is not the X's and O's that make a difference. Granted, you cannot be crazy with your schemes you have to be sound you have to do the fundamental things that you have to do to be a good football team but if all else is equal if you were up against another coach of equal stature the coach that has the best players that are playing best on that day they're going to win that is the immutable rule of college football one of the other rules that we all have to deal with in this life is that sometimes things break. Sometimes they don't work like they're supposed to. Sometimes you just have to upgrade. And in my life, what that has meant is I've had to upgrade my HVAC system. 
So right after these words from Premier Heating and Air, we are going to take a look at what makes Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs the most dominant program in college football today. Y'all know we talk about champions, and that's why I want to tell you about the Premier difference with a Premier Club membership from Premier Heating and Air. Regardless of the changes that come with the seasons, winter, spring, summer, or football, some things will never change. I'm going to be comfortable in my own home, and the comfort and well-being of my family will always be my top priority. If you feel the same way, choosing Premier Heating and Air is the play to take care of all of your family's needs when it comes to keeping you cool and comfortable in your home or business. Whether you're looking to keep your current HVAC system running at peak performance, you need to replace an aging system, or you're adding on to your home and need to upgrade to a larger heating and air system, which is what I did a few years back when we built an addition onto our home, Premier Heating and Air has got you covered. Be sure to check out their Premier Club membership offer to keep your home heating and cooling systems running at peak performance and avoid costly repairs in the future. Just click the link in the description below today to get started and give yourself the gift of time, freedom, and peace of mind to focus on the most important things in your life. The choice is clear, y'all. You've just got to experience Premier. Kirby Smart and Georgia football are dominating the sport in a way that we haven't seen anyone else do, except for Nick Saban at Alabama over the last 15 years. So with Nick Saban stepping away, regardless of what Alabama has left on the roster, I feel completely confident in stating that Kirby Smart is doing college football recruiting at a level, in a way, that no one else across the country is doing it. And we know this because that's just who Kirby is. We can, we can look all around for all the indicators of what that looks like. We hear stories from the trail about how the entire coaching staff is blanketing the state of Georgia in one day. They're visiting 100-plus schools across the state. It gets to be 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, and a text comes out to the group text for the coaching staff, and they're saying stuff like, uh, it's, it's from the big man, it's from the lead dog, it's from Kirby Smart, and he's like, yeah, I just left so-and-so's basketball game, you know, he did this tonight, or I hope y'all had a good day on the trail. So, yeah, he's encouraging his guys, but he's also sending a little message there. He's saying, I'm still out here working. Are you? I'm still out here at it, grinding. Are you? You better be. Because Kirby Smart doesn't care whether or not you like Mike Bobo or Glenn Schumann or Dan Lanning or any other coordinator he's had over the past few years. What he does care about is whether or not those guys are willing to put forth the effort on the recruiting trail to give Georgia the best roster in college football. Are they willing to work as hard as he is? That is the bar for entry to be considered for a coaching position at the University of Georgia. And today, there is no coach anywhere in the country who is doing it the way Kirby Smart is doing it. Again, there are breadcrumbs everywhere. Stories like that from the trail, from the people who were on the beat of the dogs all the time. They let us know. They let us know that that's what it's all about. But here's the thing. None of this stuff happens in a vacuum. This weekend, there was a lot of recruiting shakeup in the world of Georgia football. A lot of good, some bad, but it's an indication of what it's like every day. And we're going to pull the curtain back just a little bit tonight about what Kirby and the coaching staff think when something like that happens versus what you or I may think when something like that happens. The thing about Kirby Smart is that he recently said, I will use every minute they allow to recruit. Now, those words were not just like picked out of thin air. There was a reason that he chose to say it that way. One thing we can be certain of is that the changing landscape of college football is changing for everyone. And so far in his career at Georgia, Kirby has had a unique ability to sort of peer around the bend a little bit, to kind of see where we're headed next. Does Kirby Smart have some sort of viewer, uh, seer, sort of mythical, fantastical ability to know what's coming down the road? Well, I don't know about all that, but I know that he is well-positioned 
in the world of college football. He's on the rules board. He's on advisory committees. He is one of the longest tenured head coaches in the SEC. He's had great success. So, of course, when you can stack all those things together and you look at the package as a whole, yeah, maybe he might sort of know what's down the road, but of course he doesn't know everything that's going to happen. Of course he doesn't. Nobody does. But the landscape is changing every day, and he knows that. If you're unsure about a venture, if you're unsure what's in front of you, it's only human nature to revert back to the person that you are. You are going to be the same person when things get hardest as you are when things are going well. It's just that when things are going well, your warts might be covered up, right? But if things are going bad or if things get tough, that's when you revert back to whatever it is you are. For Kirby Smart, he has a track record. We know who he is when things get hard, when things get unclear. What's Kirby going to do? He's just going to go to work. He's going to go to work. And if you don't know what to focus on, he's made it very, very clear. Recruiting is his number one priority. So when things are unclear in the world of college football and he looks out across the landscape, conference realignment, transfer portal, we're having to juggle our roster, all of these things, the one thing he knows he can count on is that he can go out-recruit anybody else in the country. And he has built a staff that will go with him. We'll see how this year's class ultimately shakes out because there's been some change on the staff. But the buzz about all of the players, players, the buzz about all of the coaches that have been brought in to replace the guys that left is that they are top tier, tremendous recruiters. It's been said that when they walk into a living room of a high school recruit these days and they're wearing that power G on their chest, it's like a weapon being deployed. Now, those are some big words. I'm sure some of it's hyperbolic, hyperbolic. But you don't say stuff like that about me. You say that about guys that have a track record of getting it done, of results. And that's what college football is, a results-oriented business. So we'll see how this class ends up. But just like we saw this past weekend, players commit, players decommit. Sometimes that's a big deal. Sometimes everybody notices. Sometimes it puts the spotlight on your program for the very best reasons and for the reasons that make you really uncomfortable and they sting a little bit. The, the lights are so white hot. I don't know that I can remember a weekend for Georgia, like the one that just passed, where you got both of those feelings inside 24 hours. But hey, that's the world of recruiting in college football today. There are so many factors. So many factors that have to be considered. So many things that you and I are not even thinking about. But Kirby, Kirby's thinking about it. He knows. I mean, again, recently he just told us, I'm going to use every minute they give us. Georgia has a large recruiting budget and they put it to good use. In the past, earlier this year, Kirby said, I love hard work. Like, I'm into the grind. I'm into doing it better than the other team. He doesn't just mean on Saturdays at 3.30. When the lights come on, the band's playing, of course he wants to win. But he knows that if you're going to win that game, you had better one two years ago, three years ago. You had better one when you were sitting at mama's kitchen table. You had better one when you had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to convince that recruit that coming to Georgia 
competing against the best players in the country every day are going to make you better and that we will develop you and help you achieve your goals of playing football after senior day at the University of Georgia. You had better one then, or you are going to have much less chance to win on Saturdays. It's all very clear for Kirby. He has that long-range point of view. Because, again, it's about the grind. It's about not just how hard he's going to recruit. It's about the details that go into all of it, into practice, into what happens when a recruit comes on campus. There's a running back here in Georgia this year, prime top-tier blue-chip level quarter uh, running back, that Georgia was, by the recruit's opinion, not fully pressing. They didn't have all of the pressure on him. They didn't let him know how much he was wanted at the University of Georgia. But he shows up in Athens this weekend, and the script had changed. This young man was observing Ramadan. And so when he came to campus for his visit, Georgia knew that. They knew everything about him. They knew that he was going to be fasting. And so they looked at him and said, hey, we got you covered, man. Don't worry. They presented him with a laminated piece of paper and said, look, man, while you're here, we're going to take complete care of you. You don't have to worry about anything. Here's how many calories we're going to provide you every day. Here is how we're going to handle your nutrition once you're a bulldog. Once you're on campus, we're going to make sure that you get everything you need to continue to grow and develop as a player and as a young man. Blew the kid away. Nobody else had done that. Nobody else had drilled down to that level. Nobody else had worked that hard to let him know how important he was. And when he walked out of Athens, things had changed. Now, all of a sudden, Georgia had his attention. He felt like a priority. And now the dogs are back in the running for this young man. Now, again, we'll see how it plays out. But it speaks to the level of detail that goes into it, to the grind, to the importance that Kirby and his coaching staff place on recruiting high school athletes. Dana Holgerson, formerly of West Virginia and Houston and a couple other places, he visited Athens last year prior to the season, and he watched Georgia practice. And he, at his own media day in the Big 12, was asked... What do you think about how you're doing it versus how other coaches are doing it? What did you do in the offseason? He shared that he went and watched how Georgia practices. And why wouldn't you? Back-to-back national champions, you want a little piece of what they got, you go check their stuff out, see how they're doing, maybe trade a little uh, information, you know, maybe work on a scheme here or there. That's all fine and good. That's all fine and good. But the thing Holgerson came away from all that with The thing that made him overshadow his own media day by putting the shine on the University of Georgia was that while he was in Athens, he saw a level of detail and preparation and organization in their practice schedule that was unmatched across the country. It's one thing to say something like that flippantly on a television interview. It is one thing to make... A statement like that when you're at a coach's conference or something. This was completely different. He was there to talk about his team at his conference's media day. And the only thing that came out of that that made national news was the fact that he wanted everybody to know that Georgia was different. So anybody that wants to tell you that Georgia's the same, they're falling off, they're not going to do it. All of that is just hogwash. You can toss it out the window. Because when you are working the way Kirby Smart is working, when everyone in the building is pulling in the same direction and is as motivated as you are to get to the big goal, when everything is in alignment, from the guys who put the stripes on the helmet all the way up to Kirby Smart, when everything is in alignment, it's different 
than it is everywhere else. So we know the importance Kirby places on recruiting. We know that Kirby's going to grind it out. Nick Saban retires. What happens? Kirby Smart blitzkrieg through the state of Alabama. Let me go chat up every one of these guys that I might be interested in that's thinking about going to play for the Crimson Tide. Will he get them all? Don't know. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because, again, we're making the point. He saw an opportunity. He stepped on it, not timidly. Whole hog, full speed ahead, because it is a zero-sum game in the world of recruiting in college football. And Kirby Smart is fully aware. He wants to work to be better than everybody else. You would say every coach does that. Really? I'm sure you've probably heard some politicians out there to say something along the lines of, you show me your bank account, I'll show you what's important to you. I'll show you what you value. So when these other fans are out there saying whatever it is they want to say, taking pot shots at the king, just keep that in mind. Every coach is out there doing that. Really? Really? You got video evidence, pictures, or it didn't happen because my coach was out there doing that. I don't know if your guy was, but my guy was. Pictures or it didn't happen. So, yeah, it's not all the same. People want it to be that way. That's just internet chatter. That's just big boy behind the keyboard talk. It's not the same. And that is where separation happens in this sport. Again, it's not one big move that makes your team or your program that much better than the other great programs in the country. And there are a handful of them. But it's a million little things. Georgia's in the good spot that right now Kirby is entering season nine in Athens. And now, realistically, I think it would be greedy to think that Kirby's going to be doing it at this level in Athens for more than, say, 14, 15 years. Anything beyond that is like house money. It's gravy. Like, I fully expect Kirby to be there 10 years, 12 years. He decides he wants to coach till the, uh, you know, uh, for 15 seasons in Athens. That would be amazing. And we as Georgia fans would have the restful sleep every night knowing that Kirby's in charge in Athens. We know what he's about. You know what you're going to get as long as Kirby is the guy leading the Bulldogs. Pick a school, any school across the country. They may have a guy that's been there a few years, but clearly he's not doing it to this level. Just look at the results. And then there are the teams that are having to start over with new coaches. And again, I don't care who you are. It's not the same. There's going to be a learning curve. Those coaches can be doing it great. They could have always done it in a way that has won for them. Fantastic. Now stack it up next to what's happening in Athens. We'll get a lot of answers this year because there was a lot of turnover in college football. We will know about this recruiting class come December. And that's if they don't dial up an early signing day prior to that. But we're going to get our answers. But to see, the thing is, I've already read the first couple of books in the series. And I'm a few chapters into this new book. And I think I've got a pretty good feel for where it's going. One of the other things that Kirby wanted us to know, and they asked him about it this week uh, at the weekly press availability here during spring practice. And I'm just going to put it up on the screen for you so you can read it here. The big thing to take away from this point is someone asked him about K.J. Bolden and what happened with him in December and the fact that Georgia was able to flip him away from Florida State 
on signing day after KJ had committed to Florida State six months prior. And they wanted to know, how did you change your recruitment of KJ after he committed to Florida State and then get him to flip to Georgia on National Signing Day? Kirby was very, very honest. He was like, well, I didn't change anything. And he just kept working, which is all that we've been talking about so far. Again, it is about players, not plays. It doesn't matter that Kirby Smart was a national championship winning defensive coordinator at Alabama under Nick Saban. It doesn't matter that he's a two-time national champion here at Georgia. The plays that were called didn't make that much difference. What did matter was that he had really good players. And that's the point he made when he was asked about K.J. Bolden. They're like, what did you do differently? I didn't do anything. I kept working. He said, I don't see kids as committed to other places because they are not. They are not signed. Now, that's making you going to wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's going to make you double take. What did he say? They're not committed. Of course they are. It's on everybody's feed if you're a college football fan. Some big name commits and bam. Somebody like me is popping up a poster telling you so-and-so committed to the University of Georgia. It's great news. It's a wonderful thing to celebrate. It's great for that young man and his family. It's good for us here in the offseason when we're thinking about football and we're wanting to know more, that to know that another young man has chosen to come to Athens and play for Kirby and be a part of the red and black tradition and be a bulldog. Just kind of puts a smile on your face, makes you feel good, makes your day go better. Happened this weekend. Georgia got a couple of commits from young men. I'm happy for them. But see, Kirby knows. He plays the long game. He fully understands. Fully understands. Even though he sends out that congratulatory tweet, go dogs, when the Bulldogs get a new commitment, we all love to see it. We're like, heck yeah. Who is it? And you go find it. But he knows that his job is just beginning. He knows that everybody else out there who really wants to win is still going to be coming after the young man that just committed to him. Just like he continued to recruit K.J. Bolden in the last cycle. And what happened at the end? Georgia boy comes to Athens all the time. Kirby's in his ear. Eventually, he got his guy, and he committed to Georgia. He's at spring practice wearing a red helmet right now, today. Not at Florida State. I don't see kids as committed. He doesn't see the guys that commit to him as committed, and he doesn't see the guys that are committed somewhere else as done with the process. So that drives the point home for us, for fans, that yes, we love it. It is fantastic to win a new cycle. It is wonderful to think about what could be when you get a great player to commit verbally to your school. But at this point in the game, because of the changing landscape, we all know. And if you don't know, you should know. And more than that, you had better get comfortable with the idea that when someone commits to your school, the game is not over. It is not done. Don't worry. I mean, you can follow it. Enjoy it. Be interested in it. Don't let it ruin your day. Look at this weekend. Georgia received a commitment from a prototypical zero technique out of Tennessee with feet like a dancing bear. A mountain of a young man, a 1% human, six foot five, 350 pounds. Seems like a plug and play kind of guy once he learns the system at the University of Georgia. That is glorious if you're a Bulldog fan. They also picked up a recruit, the number one player, according to at least one service, for the class of 20, 
26, and it's at a premier position of quarterback. Put that in your back pocket. That's your Pied Piper for that class, as long as he sticks. If he pulls a Ryan Puglisi, it's like, yes, I am a dog through and through for the next 14 months. I am going to the University of Georgia. Wonderful. Again, wonderful for that young man and his family. Wonderful for Georgia, for Georgia fans. But we'll see. That's a long time away. And then Georgia also felt the burn, felt the sting of a huge decommitment on Saturday. All that did, though, as much as it may have made you feel disgruntled, maybe even angry about the fact that a young man made a commitment and has been committed forever and Georgia's building their class around him and man, why did he flip? Why did he do that? I don't even want him. Okay. That's not what Kirby felt. I mean, yes, maybe it caught him off guard a little bit. Maybe that's true. But... The player, the guy that grinds the way Kirby grinds, he's like, all right now, here we go. Here we go. Because now he knows what the playing field is. Now he knows who the competition is. That's going to inform every choice they make from here on out in the recruitment of that young man. Because rest assured, that's not over. This is a five-star player. This is a top-of-the-class kind of dude. A guy that you would imagine would be a difference maker in Athens should he come. We'll see. We'll see if he makes it to Athens or if he sticks with his recruitment. Same deal. It's a long time till you put ink to paper. I think it actually sort of gets Kirby fired up. I think it lets him know what he has in front of him. This is a Georgia guy from a Georgia deep red neck of the woods, red and black and silver, runs in people's veins where he's from. All day, every day. He's going to see people, his best friends, his family wearing the red and black. He's going to have to answer the question, why did you not stick with your commitment to Georgia? Kirby and staff are going to have him in Athens every chance they get between now and signing day in his ear. Come on back this week. Come on back for the home game. We'll see. That's why it's interesting. But you do have to buckle in and keep it in the right frame of reference and understand that what it means to me and you isn't exactly what it means to Kirby and the guys. They know the deal. They know the deal. Because it's like Kirby drove home with the K.J. Bolden situation. Better never rests. That's not going to change this year, next year, or any recruiting cycle as long as Kirby Smart is the head coach at the University of Georgia. The other thing that we have to think about here is there's a new motto for 2024. Better Never Rest was the motto for 2023, and it was a great one. I love it. It's going to live on. It's not going anywhere. Go ahead and get a shirt. Put it on a poster on a wall. That one's going to stick in Athens for a while because it's about everything that they are about. It represents everything that Kirby Smart believes in. But there's a new motto here in 2024. And in case you missed it, I'm going to paraphrase it just a little bit. But it goes a little something like this. Don't assume anything. That motto is supposed to be a message to every player on this young Georgia roster. Starter, non-starter, whatever your slot in the program right now. Don't assume anything. Take nothing for granted. Competition will rule the day between the lines in the weight room and in our team meetings. That's the point 
that's being driven home. But I think it also speaks to the ever-changing landscape of recruiting. Don't assume anything. What did Kirby tell us? I will use every minute they allow to recruit. Don't assume that just because a player is committed to us, that's committed to Georgia, that that player is going to sign with Georgia. Don't assume that just because that player may have felt not as much love a month ago, that we can't change that and start reeling him in to get him in the boat for this class because we can change it. Don't assume that he's not open to a different pitch because we are going to do the work. Do not assume that because a player has decommitted from the University of Georgia and might be committed somewhere else or is simply committed to somewhere else, that they are off the board because that thought is completely out the window. Kirby Smart and the staff that he has in Athens is going to recruit every player on their board right up until the pen hits the page on the signing day that that player chooses to make it official. There will be no quarter. There will be no shelter from the machine that is Georgia football recruiting under Kirby Smart. Not in 2024, not in 2025 or 26. Again, as long as he is wearing the power G as the head coach at Georgia, everybody else in the country has to know what they're in for. Georgia will not give away anything. He will not allow his coaches to assume victory or defeat, especially when we're talking about game-changing type prospects that the University of Georgia is recruiting. And why is that? Because he has a much bigger view. He wants this team to be the very best it can be. That's the goal every season. And when you view it that way and you start stacking season on top of season on top of season, you start to see a pattern and a career develop, unfold as a head coach. Following the 2017 season in the 2018 National Championship game, the one that the Dogs lost to Alabama on the miracle play, Kirby Smart told the world, we are not going anywhere. He was right. He meant that. And he was right. He has followed through on it because of the work ethic that he has and the way he's gone about his business in Athens. But it's not just about those guys that are plug-and-play starters. He mentioned this week in his presser, we haven't had any defensive linemen since I've been here come in as a freshman and be an impact player be a starter for us on the defensive line. And you start to think, you're like, wait a minute. There have been first-round draft pick after first-round draft pick come through Athens during Kirby's time. Not a one of them had the kind of impact that Kirby was asked about or the kind of impact that you might say a second- or a third-year player had or a senior might have had. Why? Because those guys couldn't get on the field because of those upperclassmen who now had put in the work and understood what it takes to get on the field. You can be a physical specimen. That can get you on the field, but you have to know what to do first. There's example after example of players that didn't start the season getting normal rotational reps, but by the middle of the season, by the back half of the season, they're on the field making plays. Damon Wilson last season did it. I told you he would. He was a guy that athletically that was gifted enough. You couldn't keep him off the field, situationally at least. Trayvon Walker, when he was in Athens as a freshman, same thing. He had a huge sack late in the season against Auburn that year to help Georgia wrap up a victory on the Plains. But none of those guys, as great as they are physically, 
not Jalen Carter, not Jordan Davis, not Devontae Wyatt. None of those guys came in as freshmen and dominated that way from the beginning. So when you look at recruiting, it is important. Kirby wants to go get those guys because he knows what they look like. 1% humans, guys that he needs to help his system flourish. But he knows they're not going to play right away. Why are you going to get them then? Why are you pushing so hard? It's because of the depth factor. While they're learning, while they're getting all of these reps on scout team against the ones and they're getting better every day, they are improving their game, raising it level by level to the point to where but when you get into conference play, you can actually have depth from those young guys. No one's expecting them to come in and dominate and take over a position. Not at Georgia. At other places, maybe. Maybe they don't have the kind of athlete that Georgia has. But at Georgia, you're not going to do that because too much is going to be asked of you. And even if you could do it physically, you're not going to be able to do everything mentally, psychologically that you're going to have to do to get on the field at the University of Georgia. So when people asked uh, Coach Smart about JJA this week in the press conference, he was like, he's out there getting great reps. He's growing. I think he can provide depth for us this year. This year. That's where those physical capabilities come into. That's why you go recruit those guys. That is why when Georgia was winning the national championship against Alabama in the fourth quarter in Indianapolis, the depth that they had, especially along the lines of scrimmage, allowed them to wear Alabama out and get that victory. When they crushed TCU, the thing you kept hearing people say, it was wave after wave of players. And those guys that were on the second and third wave, they looked like the guys that were on the first wave. There's a reason for that. It's because of the recruiting. It's because of the work that Kirby and the staff has done. It is always about players over plays. And Kirby knows that if I got the right kind of players, someday I can maybe help them become the star that I think they can be. Right now, let's get them on campus. Let's get them in the program, the culture. Let's get them in here, work them, and help them grow so that they can help us now as depth pieces, as special teams players. That's how you build a roster of four- and five-star players and keep them. That's why Julian Humphrey decides, you know what? I'm not going to get in the portal. I'm going to stay here because I'm about to have a big year for the University of Georgia at corner. He wasn't the only one. Possibly the most publicly uh, ballyhooed, the most high-profile uh, toe dip that happened in the transfer portal for Georgia this year. That's why they stay. Because they know. It is a trajectory. There is a plan in place, both for the individual, the young man, the blue chip prospect football player, as well as for the program at the University of Georgia. And everybody knows the plan. And as long as you buy in, stick it out, it will pay off for you. That's what Kirby's selling. And he believes that he owes it to these young men that if they buy in, stick it out, and do it the right way, the Georgia way, that everybody is going to be better off for it in the long run. It's because of that depth that Kirby can sit up there and say something like this. We are not going anywhere. And now... They have proof of concept. Three consecutive 13 win seasons, back to back national championships, dominant performances in their final game 
of each of the last three seasons. Think about what lies ahead. The expanded college football playoff field. What does that mean? It means you had better have some depth or you will never make it to the end of this road. So now more than ever, Kirby's philosophy is going to be both tested and, in my opinion, proven to be the winning formula for this new world order in college football. Past is prologue, as far as I'm concerned. It's always about, it is always about, it is always about players over plays. If that were not the truth, I would love for you to show me Lincoln Riley's collection of national championships. How about Ryan Day? Show me all of the natties Ryan Day has won at Ohio State. Mike Leach, may he rest peacefully. Where are all of his national titles? How about Chip Kelly? Players. It's always about players over plays. And Kirby Smart knows that. The philosophy is simple and proven. It almost sounds disrespectful to say it this way, but it's a little cavemanish. To polish it up just a little bit, it's Occam's razor. The simplest solution is the answer. If you have better players, you are going to win far more than you lose. And when you put those players in a system that demands their best, when you put them in the confines of a superstructure that allows them to grow and challenge themselves so that they can be the very best they can be at their craft. That is how you ascend to the top of the mountain. That is how you win championships. That is the blueprint for Kirby Smart at the University of Georgia. He's got it on lock, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Something else that's not going to change anytime soon is this YouTube channel. Thanks to you, we are on the march to 10,000 here on YouTube. It has been a tremendous ride so far. We are a little over a year in. I could not have fathomed the kind of growth that we were going to have in year one. And it makes me want to say stuff like, Tell them how about them fucking dogs? That's what I told them. And that's where we came up with the name for the podcast, which lives here on YouTube. We thank you for being here. We appreciate your support. And like I said, it is in fact a podcast. Has a fun name. How about that <laughs> dog's cast? You can take it with you anywhere, anytime. Just go grab it from your favorite podcast provider, download it, put it on your phone, check it out whenever you want. You don't even have to have the screen. Enjoy the theater of the mind and some Georgia football. Don't forget, we also have a newsletter. Be sure to sign up for that. If you haven't, the description has it here on YouTube. Just scroll down there to it. It takes two seconds to sign up. I promise you, you will never get anything from me that is not completely worth your time, and I will never sell your information to anyone. No worries there. Sign up worry-free. And as we do every week, I want to take a special moment to say thank you to all of our subscribers as well as all of our channel members. These are the people that make what we do possible. Their consistent and generous support here on the channel allows us to do everything we do and everything we hope we can do in the coming months. 
So to each and every one of you, I want to say thank you. If you haven't checked out our membership program here on YouTube, please feel free to jump down into the description. You'll see a link right there. Check it out. Look, see what we have to offer. We strive only to be worthy. With that, I want to say thank you so much for being here with me again. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing. It is always about players over plays. Kirby Smart knows it. He's never going to give up. He's going to keep on grinding. And he is going to double down on the philosophy that has brought two national championships to Athens in the last three seasons. I, for one, am here for it. I'm about it, about it, as we used to say when I was a younger man. So until next time, thank you for being here with me. I want you to take care of yourselves, take care of your friends, take care of your family, take care of each other, and go dogs. I told them how about them fucking dogs. That's what I told them. <laughs>